I left on the cliffhanger. Hee hee hee. Doesn't need that. Right here. <laughs> right into the nitty gritty. <laughs> I can actually do that. Before I knew it, Sam pulled me into a gentle but passionate kiss. He had erupted through my body, but his kiss slowly and almost totally got deeper. He's he's a two cinder, isn't he? Sam kept an arm around my waist and placing a hand on his chest. The energy from my body was slowly draining from the kiss, making me feel light and warm. It was almost pitiful how comfortable and how willing I was in the situation. Still, I held no regrets. I was enjoying every bit of the kiss. Sam gently leaned back, pulling me along with him so that I was laying on top of it. I thought I'd be yet comfortable being one in control. Oh! So that's how it is. Oh! <laughs> Sam was as forceful as he was when we first met, and it felt almost magical. It was how I imagined the first kiss to be like, expecting with energy, except with the energy drain. Soon, though, the energy drain stopped, and Sam gently pushed my face away to end the kiss. I stared down at him as we both painted for air. What's happening on a roof? Mind you. I had never kissed like that before, and I was so lost in the moment that I had forgotten, about how, forgotten how to breathe. Sam moved a strand of my hair from my face, behind my ears, and I still felt the fire. Oh, gosh. Look at Sam's eyes, though, like it. I almost couldn't find the strength to pull away. I could feel the hold of his mind altering spell fade away, but I still felt up. Somebody told me that I wanted more, but at the same time, wasn't sure if I truly did want to get any more. But you can! You're on a roof! <laughs> You're on a roof! This isn't wise. This isn't wise, though. <clears throat> I opened the opportunity, and I was enjoying it as much as he was. I wanted more, and I was going to let him keep going. I WANTED! <laughs> to keep going. I leaned down and kissed him again. Sam gasped against my lips, but I continued to kiss back. I could feel him pull on the tail of my bow release. We're on a roof! <laughs> Reaching it and following his hands off from around my neck. Moved the ribbon in his pocket before gently unbuttoning the top two buttons. I, I see, I think that's as far as they get the first time until like something happens. They're gonna slide right off. <laughs> Naked slide right off the roof. His iron body drove me insane, forcing him onto his lips as he ran kisses up and down. Every time I can never do this. As he began to ravish my neck and show my hot kisses, I leaned my head back and had a pleasure to say I my lips. Sam was ruthless in his continued kissing on my skin. Sam then stopped to take a kiss on me, making sure my lips and cats rushed out of the mouth into the open air. He may have been full, but this is all as I was. Dude, we're on a roof! This is not the good time! A plane's just gonna go over. Google Earth is gonna snap a picture and go, oh. Damn. I couldn't even comprehend how much time we spent making out. I was so lost in pleasure that I didn't care. Call it sinful. Well, yeah. I didn't care. I loved it. Just touch his kisses. He did. I desire to be on anything now. At that moment, even as I rode his kisses down his cheek just above my bra. <clears throat> my heart was beating wildly in my chest. Something about Sam intrigued me immensely. But something made my heart quicken for him. It couldn't have it couldn't have been love. Nah, nah, not at all. He was too passionate to be lost. What was it? How did we say this back with James? I began to feel dizzy seeing the sky start to spin almost wildly. I gripped to Sam's shoulder, trying to signal him to stop, but my mind faded to black before I let another sound. Shit, she fainted. <laughs> oh good. Didn't care what I, that I blacked out. I felt warm and fuzzy in the darkness. I never knew indulging in that kind of passion would be that good. I know. I now just waited to awaken, hopefully in a good way. My eyes eventually fluttered open, adjusting to the sight around me. I felt my familiar silks under me, letting me know that I was in my bed. We pass out a lot lately, don't we? <clears throat> I slowly sat up, stretching from the tiredness that still lingered. I felt a very soft pain in my neck and my shoulders. I could feel a <laughs> pulse gently and healing. However, when I looked down my body, I saw that my shirt had been pulled back up and rebuttoned as if nothing happened between me and Sam. I was just missing my ribbon. Before I turned to get out of bed, though, I spotted the ribbon on the pillow beside me, beside the one I slipped on. Yeah. It was tied in a nice bow with a small note attached to it. I gently slipped the note 
from Ty and open to read Sorry. I went a little too far. You all do that. You all go a little too far. <clears throat> Just stared at the note, letting a small smile grace my lips. You went too far? I enjoyed it, in spite the first time circumstance. On a roof! On a roof! Do you get it yet? <laughs> it was cute, though, to imagine him thanking me for something we both... Thanking you? We both did and, and, I, and enjoyed. I brought the note to my chest, laying memories of our meeting put in my mind. I indulged myself to easy. Don't worry about it. I looked at the time out of curiosity. The large white numbers on my phone showed 5.31 p.m. The X4 was being knocked out, and, I'm still feel, and I still feel tired. It was, it was Sunday, so I was allowed to sleep longer if I wanted to. The reminder of the night passed by. Surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but, uh, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. Unsurprisingly, the food was perfect, but it felt a little empty without the boys to eat with me. <clears throat> they most likely had already eaten, but I still but still, I felt lonely. I couldn't let it bother me. I ate and went back to my room to study and sleep. Surprisingly, I felt good going to bed that night. I felt like I could have a peaceful sleep after the previous rough nights I had. It felt good. I drifted to sleep and woke up almost flawlessly the next morning. No grogginess, no aches, perfectly energized and bright-eyed. Man, how long has it been since I got that much sleep? Looked to my alarm. I woke up ten minutes before my alarm. Well, hey! I'm going to move my iPhone back a little bit. It must be my lucky day. Karma owed me some luck. After all, I had gone through in merely a handful of days. I deserved some good luck. Ecstatic for the day ahead, I turned off my alarm before, it could, before they could ring and got dressed. However, my phone started to quickly buzz from an incoming text. What? Yo, Anderson! You're carpooling with us from now on. We're not letting you waste your money on a bus. Get ready and be at your gate at 7 stat. <clears throat> I smiled. My friends were the best. I couldn't drive yet and I didn't have a car, so it was awesome that my friends would let me carpool. Check the time, 6.30. Perfect, I can eat, get some breakfast before they come. I packed my bags and carried it uh, I carried it downstairs towards the kitchen. As I entered the dining room, I saw a plate with eggs, toast, and baking. Oh. <laughs> Sitting on the table, a fresh steaming cup of coffee set next to the plate with the, with the sugar and cream around the side. Damn. I walked to the table. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Who made this? As I spoke aloud, a small red note caught my attention. Have a good day, yours. What? Yours? What? 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 My heart skipped a beat as I finished. I could tell it was from one of the boys. Maybe it was from... Him. I smiled before putting the note in my bag and eating up. The food was so delicious, I devoured every amazing bite. Looked at the time. Time to go. I quickly rushed to the doors, checking myself in the passing mirror. I wasn't wanting to impress anyone, but I still needed to look decent. Hi, doggy. <laughs> before I could reach the handle, I... Go away! You're distracting me! <laughs> before I could... Before I could reach... Reach? Before I could reach the handle of the door... Okay. However, someone took my hand. Huh? Hi! D Why do you look so angry? <laughs> Turned to see Sam, who was holding my hand back with a stern look in his face. My name. Oh, I forgot yours. What is it? Nah, I don't know. Your name? My true name isn't Sam. I want you to know my real name if something happens. This is repetitive, isn't it? His true name? What did he mean? Why was he telling me this now? Sam gently pulled me to him and leaned close to whisper in my ear. My name... Is Almaris. Almaris. It's easier to pronounce than James. As he said his name, I could feel a lock in my memory. Something in my head would make sure I would never forget it. Sam pulled away and stared at me, despite still carrying worry in his if eyes. If you're in any danger, any time, it doesn't matter when, call my name. I promise that I'll come and help you. So, like, what if I can't open a jar of pickles? Does that count as a... Like, a situation that I need your help with. <laughs> I stared up at Sam. I almost said James. Unable to say anything. I could only nod in response. Sam nodded back before releasing my hand and heading into the dining room. Something told me that the name would be used eventually. Foreshadowing! I right on cue, Naomi drove up to the gates with Susie waving me down. I rushed out the door and we headed to school, talking about homework and the coming day. We made it. Uh, we made it into the school without a hitch. Our lockers were in the same part of the hall, so we quickly unloaded what we needed to and got our important books and necessities. First incident of the day. As I walked towards Susan and Naomi, we were both waiting 
for me on the opposite side of the hall. Something hooked my ankle and made me fall forward. Owie! Hey, are you okay? Who did that? <laughs> the three of us looked back to see Lizette and her gaggle of girls. Lizette had a look of complete innocence while the girls around her giggled like no Why, mile. you little... Suzu, don't! Felt a giant fire of anger burn in my stomach. Roar! As I stared at Lizette, today was not the only time she had... this had happened to me. However, it was now clear who was behind these incidents. Even if she was innocent and one of her goons did it, it was now obvious that Lizette was the mastermind. You don't really have to be a mastermind to think of that. Come on. From just one look on her face, she was no friend, nor would she ever, nor would she ne nor would she ever be. I had to do something. Just walk away. Just walk away. No, I was. I wasn't going to bring myself to her level. She was a bully, but I was not going to let her get to me. I had to be stronger than her. Only then would I have beaten her. I stood up and brushed myself off, pretending nothing. Anderson, happened. you okay? That was a pretty bad fall. Yeah, I'm fine. Fall like that is nothing. I love them freaking demons, yo! I merely smiled at them, not wanting to let them know my pain rushing through my body from the fall. <clears throat> my arms were quaking, my shoulders were pulsing, but I remained content-faced. I quickly gathered up my belongings and nodded to my two friends. Come on, we'll be late for history. Susan and Naomi looked at each other before frowning and nodding to me. Me and Suzu flanked me as we began to walk the, to the class away from the gaggle of bullies. As we walked, I could barely see Suzu flipping the middle finger to the group behind us from the corner of my eye. Friggin' bunch of Lisette feet lickers. I love you, Suzu. That's gross, Suzu. It's true, Naomi. It's true. It's all OMG! Lisette is the best! Let's follow her around because we obviously don't have lives. I love you, Suzu. Nima and I couldn't help but laugh. The group behind us, however, did not like Suzu's At words. At least my dad doesn't screw around in the black market to keep a stupid casino running. Uh-oh. <laughs> and then the music gets tense. Suzu stopped. Nima and I stopped as well to look at Suzu. It was completely red and anger. Suzu slowly turned to head to the group of glaring daggers at them. The fuck did you just say? And, uh... I, I had to act fast, place my hand on Suzu's shoulder, and grip tightly, knowing she could try to push my hand away. Suzu, they're not worth it. Let's just go. No, I think it's about time we taught them some manners. Suzu! She looked at the set in her group, and she had a wildly amused smile on her face, which irked me to no end. Nevertheless, I knew that fighting wasn't going to get us anywhere. Let's go! I grabbed Suzu by the shoulder, roughly pulling her back to the helmet. Step towards the group, but Naomi held on to her other shoulder. He held on to Suzu, who fought against her hands too much to pass. Surprisingly, the rest of the school day went off without another hit incident. Whatever. <laughs> went to my classes, had lunch, and was anxious to get home. As the bell rang for school to the end, my phone vibrated in my pocket. A text from you. Are picking up today, gross. It's kind of a surprise. Quickly headed back to my locker. I got my things before waiting for Na Naomi and Suzu. Hey, are you ready to go? Actually, my dad's picking me up. Really? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. We'll drive home together next time. Tell your dad that we've got you covered from now on. <clears throat> Build you. Don't let me go. Even while I laughed, something didn't seem right. My dad texted me to say this. Was he going to pick me up? Had I done something wrong? I didn't know. We have to goodbye to Naomi and Susan before heading off to the usual spot where my dad picks me up. I took the time to listen to my music while I waited. I need to go... I need to go another Rise of the Phoenix concert. Eventually, I had played the entire album with no one showing up. The, what? What the hey? <laughs> That's never late, especially not this late. What's going on in the back of my gun? I quickly dialed my dad's number again, but as soon as I pressed call, it disconnected and read a signal disconnection error message. What? No signal error? How did I not have signal? I double checked my phone and saw all five bars for signal. Must be a dead zoo. <laughs> Before I could finish, a group of hands grabbed, <clears throat> grabbed my hands and feet, covered my mouth. I screamed into the hand over my mouth, struggling to pull away from the hand grabbing at my limbs. It felt disgusted, disgusting and scary. It felt disgusting and scary! It felt. Filling their hands on me needed to stop. Hey! Don't dirty up Malix's prey! The voice would sense a fearful silver down my spine whispered into my ear. You're coming with me, Miss Anderson. I still like her, I don't care what you people say. <laughs> I couldn't fathom what was happening, but before I knew it, I was blindfolded and my limbs were quickly tied up. 
I felt myself being carried somewhere and was shoved into something that echoed in the interior of the bus or van. The doors closed off and I was taken, not sure where I was going and why. All I knew was that I was in trouble. All I saw was darkness. I felt numb as I was taken to a place I didn't know of. I couldn't even move my lips to scream. The sound zipped past my ears, first of interior, the interior of the car from the outside, then an echoey space that whispers cackles and cackles, people vibrating through it. <clears throat> However, the wrap around my eyes was eventually removed from my face, and my bonds were cut. It took a while for my eyes to adjust, but I found myself in a warehouse surrounded by devils, including knots, who were smirking at me. Nicely done! <laughs> I'm sure those little shits will come running to find you when they realize you didn't return to your precious little mansion. They'll search everywhere for you. Max walked over and said a barrel is gonna get some skin between my eyes. It'll be so funny when they find your dead body instead. Uh, a name I can't pronounce! <laughs> I choose you! <laughs> All of a sudden, a bright purple light and go through and cuss the devil's coming to cover the What the? Hell? <sighs> Guess I've rushed past me, almost forcing me back, covering my face and my arms, bracing myself and standing my ground. I tried to peek through my arms to see what was going on, but the light continued to shine brightly. It's like an angel! Oh, you're an angel! <laughs> As the gust slowly started to die, the light began to fade, revealing a really pissed off Sam! Hey, Sam, how you Don't doing? Don't worry. I got you. At the moment, Sam didn't even give Knox a chance to breathe. Oh yeah. As I blinked, I saw Sam's fist ram itself in Knox's cheek, sending the devil flying back against the wall of the warehouse and we're in. You motherfucker! You motherfucker! Sam is relentless. He suddenly followed Knox, and the wall begins limiting his fist in Knox's butt. Then for the Knox, he began to warm up the walls, and Knox was beaten in. Sam! <laughs> the main devil started trying to keep him stared. What to do? Help! Nope. So watch the silence. Air is over. Walk up beside me and cross your arms. Smirk on her face. Yes. Ah! With a blast of heat, Sam was forced back from now. Sam slid on the. Not even gonna say what I just thought. Sam slid on the balls of his feet, covering his face from the first heat that forced him back. Max, on the other hand, was perfectly on fire. His menacing eyes glared deadly daggers at Sam. You're a dirty cabass! Max pried himself from the wall and began to fire hot bullets at Sam. However, one of the shots made to Sam's body. Blink in the nine, Sam had disappeared from his spot and reappeared at Max's side, ready to lay a heavy punch in Max's head. Too slow! Alex, though, wasn't that slow as Sam thought. Max quickly turned to shoot Sam, who barely had time to dodge it. He quickly turned into a fight with Sam using his feet to dodge. Sam tried his mouth, Max using his gun like a devil like skills to try and knock on the same appearing form. Whew! It was some it was almost too fast to follow. Sam, you brought fist to a gunfight. It ain't good. However I could tell something inside Sam had changed. He wasn't holding anything back in this fight. It was as if something incredibly demonic had taken a hold of him and forced each punch he threw. At least that he made <clears throat> was this the extent of demon power. I didn't have a chance to answer myself. As Sam tried to dodge him out, Sam tripped and landed on one knee and left on <laughs> Ow! Gotcha, bitch! Gasp more. Sam had no chance to dodge or run. I could only stare petrified as Max charged forward to get the barrel of gun in his mouth. Eat hellfire, Igibus! Bryce got that stank! <laughs> and at that moment, something in the air changed. The air instantly went from frantic to still in energy. What could have been described in a tone? As the color red quickly turned from nothing but purple and green, as everything began to come together all at once. My eyes never strayed from Sam's face, however, and that's changed. His eyes begin to glow a bright golden color as he began to bite down on the gun in his mouth. Ow! Ow! <clears throat> as the trigger was pulled, the gun was snapped in two between Sam's teeth. Small fragments of the gun flew out everywhere, while the look on Max's face went confused and petrified. <laughs> Before Max had a bigger response, Sam let out a giant, animalistic roar, sending waves of fear down my spine and tackled Max to the ground. Oh god! Is that the whole thing? Is that the whole thing? Damn, bruh! Get out in your throat! 
After Jane's command, command, the sound stopped. The only thing anyone could hear was Sam's pants and grunts of her air. Malix is dead, and you've lost your glamour spell. <clears throat> he beat him to death! Shut up. Well, glamour spell, what did he mean? Why did Sam so sound so different? Why was he being hidden from it's me? It's a spell that makes us look human. Shut up! Stop doing that! I froze. Like human? They didn't look human after all? What did they look like? Like demons. Shut up! Stop it! <laughs> As if Matthew knew what Damien was talking about, Matthew spoke up, followed by the sound of cork popping out of bottles. Well, not for much longer. Here. Let's go. <clears throat> you gotta regain your glamour spell and you're all out of energy. Come on. Drink up, buddy! Fine. Whatever. I could hear the small clinking of glass being passed before hearing Sam guzzle down a liquid of some sort. The feel of the air around me gently began to warm back up, insinuating that everything had been returned to normal. Finally, Damien moved his hand from my eyes, allowing me to see around me once again. The devils, including Eris, had fled. On top of Malx's body was a dirty sheet that was quickly turning red from blood. Jesus, Sam. <laughs> I could see that Malx's face was completely caved in. <laughs> oh my, make me a tiffin' blanket. Good God. <laughs> That's gotta be the most brutal way! The boys, however, gathered around me. All of them, including Sam, looked like nothing had happened. What? <laughs> I tried to speak, but everything zipped around in my head. At the whole the event, I felt like speaking was possible. Let's just get you home, miss. There's nothing more to see here. I could only nod. What had happened blo boggled, boggled, boggled my mind to the point of disbelief. I was second-guessing everything. Lost in sea of what, how, and when. As we walked out of the warehouse, I looked at Sam for some sort of sign that I was not dreaming. Sam kept his eyes down and away from me. <clears throat> it was over. Mox was gone and the boys were finally safe. A wave of relief ran through my body at the thought of never having to deal with that group again. At the same time, a ping of realization hit the back of my mind. The boys were only going to stay until after Mox was defeated. That was our deal. As we approached home, I could feel something heavy weigh down in my heart. It was late, but the boys led me inside, turning the lights on the lobby. Finally, we can relax. Gosh, Matthew, I can't talk. <laughs> it will be good to have some rest without devils breathing down our necks. Mm. Ugh, I'm just tired. Can I hit the hay early? I think some sleep would be good for all of us. Mm. Shut up, Damien. <clears throat> I looked at Damien, knowing he could read my mind, and, uh, and frowned. I didn't want him to know about my thoughts on the situation. Yeah, that sounds good. I wanted to just end tonight. Too much had happened, and I felt dizzy just trying to figure it out. However, Damien spoke up, stopping all of us from moving. Should we be gone in the morning? Do you ever just zip it? <laughs> the air became still with tension. The realization of the situation hit the boys like a wave, forcing them to turn to me curiosity. And curiosity. They remembered their deal, and were now waiting for me to decide their fate. I gulped face to face with the reality of the situation. The boys were leaving it up to me. They looked like they were willing to accept whatever I had demanded. It was only fair, though. After all, that had happened. <laughs> James, though! I looked at Sam, feeling- <laughs> Sorry, he's covering James! Aw, <laughs> oh, poor James. I looked at Sam, Sam <laughs> feeling my heart flutter my chest. Didn't want him to leave, but would he ask to stay? I hoped that we, he would say no and ask me to stay longer. Ask me for him to stay longer. What? As if he knew what I wanted, Sam moved and stepped- to me, putting his hand in his pockets, and looking down to the ground, he was still ashamed of what he had done, but he spoke to me regardless. Hey, um, I, oh, shit, um, I kinda, <laughs> uh, I wanted to thank you for your energy and stuff, well, <clears throat> I, I kinda <laughs> wanna stay here. That baby. Can we stay here? 
please. That was so hard for you. <laughs> I had to get to beat while a large blush ran across my cheeks. The boys stared at Sam wide-eyed, but didn't dare speak out. Sam stepped back to give me space, returning to where he was. Thank you. Hi, James. How you doing? I moved my gaze across each boy, trying to make a decision. If they left in the morning, I would never see them again, and my life would return to normal. If I did decide to let them go, it would have been for best. No goodbyes, no delays. But did I want to? They had done so much for me in such a small amount of time. I wanted them to stay. I wanted him! Him! Damien, him! To stay. <laughs> Me and Damien, though. Me and Damien. I merely spi smi bleh, smiled, staring at the man I had come to feelings for, before speaking at last. I would love it if you all could stay. <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> Matthew's just so happy. The boys cheered tirely, but nonetheless enthusiastically. I giggled at the sight. It was cute to see everyone so excited, despite the tiredness that ran deeply through their, our bodies. Today was a rough day. My home is your home, as long as you can all help with the chores. The boys nodded in unison, agreeing with the terms I'd set for them. Despite the good situation, I put myself fully sick in my unconsciousness. However, James quickly tapped his hands together, getting everyone's attention and waking me up, making sure I didn't pass it on the floor again. All right, everyone. We're all very tired, so let's head to bed, shall we? Oh! Yeah, sleep is actually a thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it is, Matthew. We've had a very long day, but it will be good to just relax tonight and tomorrow. Sleep sounds really good right now. And what did you do? What did you do, Damien? What did you do? Yeah, man. I watched Happy Smile grow on Sam's lips. Where? Where? I don't see one. I just see a line. I just... No. I'm sorry. I don't see one. He shared my excitement, knowing that we would both be together longer. He knew how long we would... Who knew how long we'd stay together? Well, I cared about Zawada with him. Aw, love. Love. The others quickly left to finally rest, leaving me and Sam alone at last. <clears throat> My heart fluttered a bit as Sam walked closer to me, looking to his feet. He was nervous, but it really was cute to see him that way. So I didn't do anything but smile. Hey, um, thanks for letting us stay. You practically begged, and how hard was that to get out of your mouth? I mean, seriously. Welcome, Sam. Happy you, have to stay. you get to stay here, whatever. I watched his smile brighten a bit before he cleared his throat and looked up at me with a serious face. I didn't know if it was tiredness or my growing attachment to him, but I felt myself sway a bit on my feet. Ever since his face made it clear that he wanted to say something else, I forget that, that my bed was also calling for me. Listen, about what happened at the warehouse. Okay. No, it's fine. You did what you had to, I don't understand. I had accepted... Hiccup. up. I had accepted everything that happened and knew that Sam had to do what he had to do. He was real. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he was someone I didn't want to be without, even if it meant nodding against my curiosity. Besides, I was too tired to explore the memory any further. Sam nodded before holding out a hand to me. Come on, let's get you to bed. Yay! Squee! I nodded before Sam gently lifted me up into his arms like a bride and carried me to the room. Why does everybody do that? Am I, like, weightless? I didn't want to leave his arms, leaning my head against Sam's chest, but eventually I was slowly lowered my bed covered with my bed covers. I was still in my school clothes, but I was too tired to strip or care. <laughs> what strip? I looked to Sam, finding a yawn from escaping as he gently ran a hand over my hair. Get some sleep, all right? I'll make some breakfast again for you in the morning. Well, it was you. I nodded with a tired smile before watching him slowly stand and leave my room, closing the door. Bye bye. A wave of happiness washed over me as I laid in bed. I made a good choice. Sure, it'd be hard, but I could tell that I would would be able to manage it. Up around the house and being with a man I slowly started to fall for it would be worth it. I slowly put my exhaustion to take over. I let sleep consume me as I drifted into darkness and night. Everything was peaceful. I was happy. Last time it skipped. Interesting creature. I'm ending it here. I'm too tired for this. I'm not dealing with her right now. See you guys next time.